The Nauticos team has always maintained the theory that originated with the legendary pilot and writer Elgin Long. Amelia Earhart ran out of fuel only minutes from locating the airfield on Howland Island, where the U.S. Coast Guard cutter Atasca was on station receiving her last radio transmissions. A bittersweet expedition in 2017 to the Pacific completed a search area of more than 2,000 miles of sea floor, but failed to locate Earhart's aircraft. So the Nauticos team went back to work, developing a fresh approach to the existing data while planning to gather new information. Whose expertise are we missing? What expert can bring that one little tool that might add to this and, and give us what the answer is, where we should be looking? Nauticos has always utilized multiple data points to support their crashed and sank theory. Among them is the radio propagation information garnered from hours of interviews and research from the logbooks of the U.S. Coast Guard Itasca and eyewitness reports from those aboard the cutter on July 2nd, 1937. We're what's known as the crash and sank theory, which was first publicized a lot by uh, Elgin Long in his book, uh, Amelia Earhart, The Mystery Solved. His theory is that she simply ran out of gas, had to ditch in the ocean somewhere near Howland Island. And that airplane eventually sunk, and it's in the bottom of the ocean waiting to be found. Since 1999, the retired Collins radio engineers have focused on determining the technical parameters and performance of each of the system components comprising Earhart's high frequency, or HF, communication link. In the Earhart mystery, as she's approaching Howland Island, uh, she makes several radio transmissions by analyzing how strong the signal is and a bunch of other parameters, technical parameters, about the airplane and the radios she used and the radios on the Atasca. We, we should be able to determine the distance that the plane was from the island during these various radio transmissions. This was initially accomplished by computer modeling. Well, one of the big questions is, can you trust the computer program? How do we know it represents reality? Obtaining and restoring all of the scarce 1937 equipment prevented such tests until now. It's hard to find some of this old equipment. Uh, for one thing, it was very expensive back in the 30s. They didn't make very many of them, and then even fewer of them survive today. The thing that really kicked us off here was the Western Electric 13C transmitter. This is the only one that anybody has ever heard of or saw. I was fortunate enough to be able to buy it and restore it. Without that, it, it, it would leave a big gap or hole in trying to do what we're doing today. The team needed two more critical items to implement the test. An aircraft similar to Earhart's Lockheed 10E, and a seagoing vessel to simulate the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Atasca. In March of 2020, the Nauticos team met with Dynamic Aviation CEO Michael Stolzfus, his father Carl Stolzfus, and Director of Safety Rod Moyer. The team from Dynamic Aviation was interested, but when Carl offered the assets of their prized Beach 18 aircraft and full technical support, the deal was sealed. The look of the two airplanes is very, very similar. Because of that, we can put the same style V antenna on the airplane and have the same kind of engine noise and background that, sh that, uh, that would have been present when she made her transmissions. This particular airplane, uh, when we got it, didn't have a name. How could you name the airplane anything else? And uh, Miss Amelia is uh, really the name for this airplane. It's important to understand Amelia Earhart, uh, her, her thinking, uh, what got her to the place where she was willing to take what was acknowledgeably high risks. When they helped us understand the commitment that they have had for decades, and when they helped us understand how they think about how they go about the work, uh, we very quickly then moved to saying, okay, these are the guys that we want to be with. These are the guys that we could consider not only partners in solving some, some mystery, but these, these, these guys will become our friends. Dynamic Aviation operates a 200,000 square foot heavy maintenance and modification center, engine shop, and privately owned airport at its headquarters in Bridgewater, Virginia. Rod Moyer, 
Brad Holiday and Mike Morin joined the effort to configure Ms. Amelia with equipment racks, HF antenna, and a rarer direction-finding loop antenna provided by Nauticos. During the recreation of Amelia Earhart's last flight, the engineers will be measuring the signal strengths and distances for each of her last transmissions. Beautiful scenery out today. The airplane's looking good. In order to accommodate the array of radio gear that matched the U.S. Coast Guard Itasca, the team needed a seaworthy vessel of adequate size, capable of offshore operation. The selection of the Nellie Crockett was the brainchild of Nauticos volunteer and sailor Jeff Whiteman, a longtime friend of the Parrish family and accomplished ocean sailor. She's got plenty of deck space, a very large hold area down below. She's very historic looking, which is kind of in keeping with a historic project. The Nellie Crockett is a Chesapeake Bay oyster byboat built in 1925. She's considered one of the best preserved examples of this type of vessel. Whiteman and Nellie Crockett's owner, Captain Ted Parrish, have been working with the radio engineers to develop a plan for outfitting the historic vessel and safely navigating her offshore for the tests. Captain Parrish is a licensed master mariner and Delaware Bay pilot. The team from Dynamic Aviation, Nauticos, and the Nellie Crockett came together in Bridgewater in Cape Charles, Virginia in mid-September 2020 to bring the radio tests to life. Over a two and a half week period, the tests provided critical data about the radio transmissions between Amelia's Lockheed Electra and the Itasca during her final hours. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter as Nauticos completes the analysis of the newly gathered data.